You read the thing on masks, and, and it's amazing, though. We're going to put this up, too, a CDC study in May. CDC. How ineffectual masks and even hand washing is in, in the contagion issue. In a hospital environment with special masks and where a doctor is, op- is with open bodies, washing of hands is critical, and uh, that's infection. This is transmission of a virus. This morning coming into this building, I don't wear a mask outside because uh, I, I, I retain an element of, of reason and rationality. Okay? And I, uh, I just don't. The price paid for masks outdoors and in many instances indoors, but outdoors certainly, is much greater than the good that it does. Masks dehumanize. A woman was walking in. She was about 20 feet away from me. And I saw she was completely masked. I said, good morning, the big smile. No response. She just rushed up ahead. No response. She would have responded if she didn't have a mask. Huh? Well, I, of course, she didn't smile at me. But how would I know if she did? Of course not. Do you understand what veiling a population does to human intercourse? Do you understand that? It's dehumanizing masks. Why well, I proposed to the Muslim veil, it's dehumanizing of women. But anyway, liberals don't care about the veil. The former head of the Reform uh, Rabbinate gave a speech years ago to uh, the Muslim Society of North America, Islamic Society of North America, and he said, I, I respect the veil because he's a good liberal, good lefty. He respects the veil? Wow, I don't. Why is, why is making people invisible respectable? The price paid for Americans not able to see each other is a very, very big one. Years before this, I said health uber alles, right? Health above all. But uh, what if it doesn't turn out to be helpful? We'll get, I'm going to put up the CDC study. Should I read it to you, folks? I'll read it to you because it's, it, it, it's so amazing to me. I had my two uh, spouses read it. And uh, turns out to be it. Volume 26, number 5, May 2020, CDC, Emerging Infectious Diseases, May 2020. Get that? Non-pharmaceutical measures for pandemic influenza in non-healthcare settings. I'll translate it to you in English. Non-pharmaceutical measures, in other words, not prescribed for pandemic influenza, that's called COVID in this case, in non-healthcare settings outside of hospitals. Get it? Personal Protective and Environmental Measures. And this, the authors are with the University of Hong Kong. How sad. Hong Kong, China. That's what it's written. How sad. Abstract. Okay? So this is the, this is the summary, in their words, of what this study shows. There were three influenza pandemics in the 20th century, and there has been one so far in the 21st. Local, national, and international health authorities regularly update their plans for mitigating the next influenza pandemic in light of the latest available evidence on the effectiveness of various control measures in reducing transmission. That was English. That was good. Here we review the evidence based on the effectiveness 
of non-pharmaceutical personal protective measures and environmental hygiene measures in non-health care settings and discuss their potential inclusion in pandemic plans. And now, here we go. Although mechanistic studies support the potential effect of hand hygiene or face masks, evidence from 14 randomized controlled trials of these measures, 14, did not support a substantial effect on transmission of laboratory-confirmed influenza. We similarly found limited evidence on the effectiveness of improved hygiene and environmental cleaning. We identified several major gaps requiring further research, most fundamentally on improved characterization of the modes of person-to-person transmission. Okay, just thought I'd share that with you.